This is the 10-Minute Contrarian Podcast. This is VP. We are a solutions-based podcast, diving into the world of contrarian investing and alternative finance. You can find us hosted on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, nonsenseforex.com, and podcast players everywhere. Episode 49 is brought to you by No Nonsense Forex Trading Psychology, the book, available on Amazon. Trading has been extraordinary. I really can't remember a time since I began the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel where trading across the board has been this good. You know, maybe oil notwithstanding, but Forex, metals, indices, individual stocks, crypto, my God. People are absolutely killing it all across the board. Now, these are feelings and emotions that we have not experienced in a long time, at least not on this scale. If you are not careful from a trading psychology standpoint, you could be setting yourself up for a huge collapse later. Do not let that happen. Buy my book. You will always have it right there when you need it, and there will always come a time where you will need it or one of my free videos. If you enjoy the podcast, if you enjoy the videos, if you enjoy the blogs and you like the way I write, this thing is a bargain at $25 USD. All of those five-star reviews cannot be wrong. I will provide a link down in the show notes where you can go to a page that has a little blurb on it. It has the video on it if you want to know more information, or you can just go type in No Nonsense Forex into Amazon and go buy the darn thing right now. It is the 10 Minute Contrarian Podcast, and I don't really want to do episodes like this ever. Uh, the crypto market is crashing at levels we have not seen in a very long time. Yet, unlike most people, we are prepared for this. We've been prepared for this. We've been positioned for this. We know exactly what to do. It's funny. It's like almost none of my subscribers are panicking over this. Um, probably for a few reasons. One, we, most of us at least, are traders first and investors second. And as I just said in the ad read, trading has been incredible. Uh, so it takes some of the sting out of our investments going down. Uh, and two, we are mostly, well, I think we all are, long-term believers in crypto. And so really big drops like this are an incredible gift that most of us are very, very excited to take part of as soon as our charts tell us it is time to. You know, I myself am crazy excited to get down on some of the prices I am seeing right now and I'm actually hoping a lot of them go even lower. You know, I'm in this for the next five to 10 years. You know, what do I care what my performance looks like now? I just want low prices. I, I want the chance to get more while the chance is still available because it won't always be. You know, there's going to be conversations in the future, says, remember back in 2022 when Chainlink dropped down to $7? Please tell me you got some of that. And I'll be like, fucking right, I did. I don't pass up on golden opportunities like that. It's insane. Uh, but I do need to contain my excitement, as do you. We need to gently press the brakes here for a little bit and actually talk about what is happening. Uh, because what is happening right now is going to go down as a major part of our financial history. And when things like this happen, as usual, people are being very rash. Um, in two different ways, but neither one of them are good, so we need to talk about that too because all of you guys are in social media at some point, and I know you guys see things like this, but times like this are when some of the most boneheaded behavior on the positive and negative side from very prestigious, respected investors start coming to the surface. More on that in a moment. Um, so if anybody is listening to this in the future, it is the 13th of May, 2022. And the fallout from Terra Luna UST is still happening. UST has de-pegged. Um, the founder, Do Kwan, was trying to save it. It looks like he is failing. The book is not completely closed on this just yet, but it is pretty close. Uh, it would take a minor miracle at this point. And this has not only wrecked people's confidence in stablecoins, it has wrecked their confidence in the crypto market in general. You have to remember, crypto has the highest amount of dumb investors out of any sector in the world, and it's not even close. Dumb, inexperienced, weak-handed investors 
many of which know nothing about the market and therefore had very little confidence in their positions and therefore will bail at the first sight of danger. That's why these drops are so pronounced. The manipulators and the whales get the party started, and they know, just with a little bit of fear, all the over-leveraged investors and all the paper-handed idiots will bail because they feel like they have no other choice. This creates a cascading effect, which just makes everything drop at a, such a higher rate than any other market. And unfortunately, it's going to be this way for a while, so we're just going to have to get used to it. You know, escalator up, elevator down. Or elevator up, tower of terror down. If you don't know what the tower of terror is, look it up. It's cool. But anyway, UST became the third most popular stablecoin in the world and the top algorithmic stablecoin in the world. On top of that, you could go to Anchor Protocol and stake it for 19.5% year over year. There was a lot to like. Now, despite a lot of people asking me what I thought about Luna and a lot of people giving me grief for never mentioning Anchor Protocol when I talk about stablecoin yields, uh, you guys need to show yourselves, by the way. I never did a piece on Luna or UST. And in all honesty, it's not because I was necessarily against it. I just didn't have enough confidence in it for a couple of reasons. Now, I have, of course, done research on UST, watched plenty of videos, and asked other people about it to explain it to me. And every time they do, I just didn't quite completely get it. And that's a problem. On just about every one of my positions, crypto, stocks, otherwise, I can say with pretty good confidence that I am in the top one percentile of investors when it comes to actually knowing what it is and what I'm investing in. You know, if it's not top one percent, it's top two or three. I don't mess around. This is my money. I worked hard for it. I want to know what I'm investing in, and I suggest you do the same. I want to understand the risks. I want to understand the rewards, and when I'm okay with the risk-reward ratio, then that's when I go in. You know, with UST, it was just a lack of understanding on my end. And then on top of that, whenever it comes to something that sounds too good to be true, like algorithmic stablecoins do, now I do have some DAI. Um, DAI is an algorithmic stablecoin that has withstood the test of time. Nobody's coming after it. Nobody's fudding it. And if for some reason it were to go to zero, you know what? It's like one of 20 positions I have in the crypto world. I don't know the exact number. But... You get the idea. The people that really, really got hurt by this whole Luna UST thing are the ones that had way too much of their money in it to begin with. You see them outing themselves on Twitter. I'm like, why are you telling the entire world that you were stupid and over leveraged into one position? You are getting absolutely no sympathy from me. The fact that you did that, yet you still have people who listen to you and follow you is maddening. But anyway, I could talk about that all day. With UST and Luna, and Anchor, too. Remember, I said not that long ago, about two months ago, if that, that DeFi Safety did not give Anchor Protocol its top rating. Now, again, not a reason to FUD the damn thing, but just not enough confidence or motivation for me to put my money over there, and certainly not enough to promote it here. Oh, and I almost forgot. When I would talk to people about UST, I would ask them. I asked them the same thing I ask the people when it comes to crypto lending platforms because they talk about it like it's the best thing ever. I'm like, okay, what would it take for this whole thing to fall apart? How bad would it have to get? Now, most people cannot confidently answer that question. And the ones who do answer it to me don't seem to really answer it completely. They're like, well, this would have to go down and the market would have to crash. I'm like, well, I've seen this market crash a lot. So what happens if it does crash? And they're like, well, a lot of people who took these loans out are going to get liquidated. I'm like, oh, okay. So remind me never to do that or invest in those platforms. And sure enough, on a lot of those crypto, specifically crypto lending platforms, People are getting liquidated left and right. Like people who you know took crypto loans out to buy homes and things like that. They are getting absolutely wrecked 
by doing something that at the time was perceived to have a very high chance of being successful. So I guess the main takeaway here is when the next round of these things come, approach them with a healthy amount of skepticism. You don't have to avoid them altogether. This is a great technology, and there's going to be a lot of things that come out that do seem too good to be true at first, but then they're actually going to fulfill what they have promised, and those are the projects that are going to really take off. You know, don't blindly avoid everything like this. However, ask questions and make sure you are satisfied with the answers before you move forward. You know, I'm not going to pat myself on the back and say that I was right because I was never against Luna or UST. There were a few people out there that were, but there weren't that many. It was a small handful. You know, there's a small handful of people out there that say Bitcoin is going to zero. Is that enough for you to lose confidence in Bitcoin? No. You know, and these small handful of people fudding UST and Luna were not enough for really anybody to lose confidence in the project. So again, just take mental inventory of all these things because history repeats itself. And in crypto, it does not take long for history to repeat itself. Now, again, the upshot of all this is we pretty much have every investable instrument tanking right now, but none like crypto, which means we are getting bargains already in crypto that we have not seen in a very long time. I am already assembling a wish list for when I want to come back in and which projects that I already own do I want to dollar cost average into. Uh, but again, unlike your favorite guru on Twitter and YouTube, I am not making moves right now. That is crazy. You know, you have people out there that are A, dumping. Why on earth are you dumping? You're not supposed to sell on the way down, especially not this far down. Or, what is more often the case, and you see very high-profile people do this, anytime something drops, especially if it drops heavy, they want to announce to the world that they just bought the dip. They have zero methodology as to why they even do it. They just love virtue signaling to you that, hey, I have full resolve and full confidence in this project. I'm not scared that it's going down. Look at me. Every time price falls, I buy more. Now, I do think history is going to be very kind to these people, but that doesn't mean they're doing it in a very intelligent way. These are the same people who are buying Bitcoin when it dropped down to 60K and then 58K and then 55. It's like, it's like there's better ways to do this. You know, blind dip buying might work for Michael Saylor, but it's not what most people should be doing. It's probably not even what Michael Saylor should be doing. If I was a client of his, I'd be like, yo, hey, could we be a little less reckless here? Uh, but I see a lot of people talking about it. They're like, wow, I just bought X at this price because look how low this price is. Well, as we have talked about before, it can go lower. Remember, these people were doing this exact same shit a week ago, and you know, now prices are much lower. You know, if only they had charts instead of blind, boneheaded ambition. But because of what just took place, there are some compelling reasons as to why it absolutely could go lower. Let's talk about those. I want you guys to keep an eye on the SEC. The SEC began to protect investors from the dirty dealings and the manipulators. But over time, it has morphed into an entity that is far more evil than the people they were meant to protect you from. Their main job nowadays is to protect the hegemony of the United States dollar because that is the tool that they use and their overlords use to beat everybody over the head with and control them with. And crypto is an absolute threat to that. You know, at first, when Gary Gensler became the head of the SEC, everybody was all excited. They're like, oh, he used to teach a crypto class at MIT or Harvard or wherever he was. This guy knows crypto. This guy understands crypto. Yeah, that's why he was hired. You can't put somebody like Janet Yellen in charge of the SEC who doesn't understand crypto at all. They're useless in the war against crypto. You need somebody that knows what it is and how to fight it. Now, the problem is with the SEC, for a while now, they have not had a lot of ammo to use against cryptocurrencies. 
and they had been getting desperate and grabbing at straws, and people could tell. A lot of their arguments just didn't add up. But now, because of what just happened, now they got some ammo. They got some real evidence to present to the world saying, look, this stuff is still very unstable and therefore needs to be regulated. They are now emboldened like they have not been in a long time. And right when we thought we were out of the woods when it comes to regulation coming from the United States, we have now taken a giant step backwards. And who will the SEC likely be targeting in the near future? Well, there are two entities that I can see. And unfortunately, the first one is Tether. Now, you might be sitting there saying, well, I don't hold any Tether. Well, that's good for you. It doesn't matter. If Tether goes, we all go. Now, fundamentally, I don't like Tether either, but it has endured and it has been able to take itself off of the radar successfully in the past year or so. You know, I don't want Tether on people's radar, um, but that's unfortunately where it is now. And if you are a crypto trader, you use Tether all the time. Now, it shouldn't really affect traders too much unless you're dumb and you make a bunch of Tether and you don't exchange it for anything, which is a bad idea. I actually have a new client that pays me in Tether. And the very first thing I do when I see it hit my wallet is I exchange it for USDC and I just eat the stupid gas fee. I'm fine with it. I don't want Tether on the books. Uh, but I have a feeling if they really start to audit that thing heavily, they are going to like what they see uh, because that thing is a problem waiting to happen. Now, it's also going to be in the crosshairs. It's something that's already in the crosshairs, and I think they're just going to ratchet things up, and that's going to be Coinbase. Now, again, you're like, well, I don't use Coinbase, and if I do use it, I take my money off the exchange. You know, So what's the big deal? The big deal is we need outside money. Um, outside money doesn't really watch CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko or anything like that. Their window into the crypto world, if they're an investor, is usually just them looking at Coinbase. If Coinbase is down, the market's down. If Coinbase is cratering, that means the market is too, and they were right not to enter it in the first place, in their minds. And if Coinbase is getting destroyed by the SEC, you know, major investors all over the world are going to know about it, and that is really bad for the immediate future of crypto. And again, if anybody has any crypto on Coinbase, for the love of God, get it off. The SEC just put something through that is making Coinbase be a lot more transparent with what they have. And they had even said, I can't remember the, the exact verbiage, but if Coinbase were to ever go bankrupt, and I don't know how close they are to this, but they are certainly trending in the wrong direction. We can say that, but... If they go bankrupt, the people who hold their cryptocurrency on the Coinbase exchange will be treated as general unsecured creditors, which means there will be some type of, I guess, like kind of like a bank bail-in where you will be responsible for paying back Coinbase and making them whole with your crypto. It sounds absolutely insane, but this is where we're at right now, and you need to be aware of it. Uh, on top of that, allow me to FUD a little bit more. On a macro level, we have not still seen a lot of things that I think are very much due to happen, like a housing crisis, like a bond crisis, like a credit crisis, like a major food and energy shortage. You know, all these things are still coming down the pike. Now, I don't know how this would directly affect crypto, but we do know uh, that so far the crypto market has gone down with everything else. Now, what am I doing about this? Well, when my charts give me a signal, I am still going to enter because my charts have done me better than my brain has. Um, but I am happily stacking cash and waiting for this little phenomenon to occur whenever it does. Uh, it could be a while. I, I hope it's a while because I really want to stack cash in the meantime. Now, we have talked about doing this on several episodes of the 10 Minute Contrarian podcast. Feel free to look those up. We've talked about shorting the market. Again, you guys know exactly what to do when these situations happen. Uh, but I want to be on the record saying this as well. I have no regrets whatsoever about holding on to the positions I hold on to. I take profit where it's appropriate. My overall portfolio is still up. You guys know how long I've been in this. I've documented everything. 
And I would personally rather take 98% drawdown than to miss out on investments that I feel have an absolute asymmetrical upside. And you don't know when they're going to take off. You don't know if they're going to go down with the market and if they do for how long. The only thing you can control is whether you're actually in the game or you're not. And we are all in the game. And I am looking very much forward to becoming deeper into the game. Again, situations like this are positives for guys like us. We get to go bargain basement shopping. And we get to go bargain basement shopping for things that really in this time fundamentally have done nothing but get better. The only thing that crashed is sentiment, not fundamentals. In the past year, Bitcoin has gotten better in many ways. So has Chainlink. So has Cardano in so many ways. Even things like Litecoin that pretty much do one thing. Well, now you can do that one thing really well with a privacy add-on. And even things like Uniswap, which you guys know I hold. I mean, you can get the top decks in all of crypto for a fraction of what it was trading at at its highs. And do you really think there's going to be anything unseating Uniswap as the top decks in the next year or so? Next two years? You know, I would say those chances are pretty low. You know, so I'm looking to add on there as well. You know, and I have some new positions in mind, which we will talk about here on the 10 Minute Contrarian podcast in the future. So stay tuned for that. You know, the future is pretty rosy. The future is pretty exciting when it comes to the investment world, especially in crypto, in my opinion. Uh, but again, we need to sit back and wait because the very near future is going to have some hurdles that did not exist before. So I guess the moral of this entire episode is even though you should know better, don't just be jumping in because you think things are cheap. And I would agree with you that they are cheap, but there is a reason why we have been as successful as we have been up until this point, and that is because we trust the method. Don't let a fantastical time in history screw with your emotions and end up making you deviate from the method. Stick to what works. Long term, it will always work. Resisting the temptation of the prices we're seeing right now is going to be perceived as crazy by a lot of people. But whether we end up getting in at slightly higher prices or slightly lower prices or much lower prices, when we look back five years from now, it is not going to matter. We will still be seen as being very, very early.